Greetings everyone, I uh, thought I would do a video to follow up on my last video where I was talking about how I want to buy a gun. And lately I've become pretty much obsessed with the idea of getting a gun. And it's really starting to annoy me because the guns that I want I can't find, or at least one I can't, the other ones I can maybe find but not cheap. If you order them brand new, they cost a shitload, and if you get them pre-owned then you might have some trouble with them. And usually when you buy a gun they don't take any refunds, you can't take them back. You're just stuck with them. So I've really been really careful about it, and I've limited my choices down. I'll let you guys kind of see what I'm thinking. Some of the ones I didn't like were the, well, the CZ-75 I liked at first because I'd seen a lot of videos of it, and you can trick them out with a lot of cool get gadgets and stuff. But uh, I don't like how the slide is inside the frame or it's on the outside. It's like you can barely get a grip on it because I tried one out and, like, you can hardly pull it back and it seems it just feels awkward. Uh Browning high powers, I kinda like those, but they're really expensive and they're kinda plain looking for the price and it's just I don't know. Glocks I don't like because there's just a whole bunch of reasons I don't like Glocks. I'm trying to find something that's not got a lot of plastic. And Glocks are pretty much all composite materials. There's hardly any metal. And I don't like the sight picture on a Glocks because they're square. I've never liked use them in games because it seems like it's cutting off part of your peripheral vision like I said if you had like a rounded barrel on top really nitpicky I know but it's just one of my pet peeves with Glocks and they just don't look good to me either grip looks like it's slanted weird I don't know how to explain it I just don't like Glocks just don't like them everybody loves them I don't know why everybody likes Glocks but nobody gives me any reasons anyway I'm gonna switch this to fraps here in a minute and show you some like I've been looking all over the place and I wanna show you this crazy road trip I went on kinda of go through it uh... but first I got this because I've been to this gun store in town like three times and I felt bad because I never buy anything. I'm always just looking at shit. I've got a range bag with digital camo. It's kind of like that time I bought my Super Nintendo games before I owned a Super Nintendo. Like I have a, a gun bag, but I don't have a gun to put in it. So <laughs> another thing I've been doing lately is I got addicted to videos about open carrying your gun, which is like if you get a, a CCW, which is a concealed carry weapons permit, uh, you can carry your gun hidden under your shirt or in your pants or in a ankle holster, however you want to carry it, right? But in a lot of states, like my state, you don't have to do that. You can just carry it out in the open if you want. But a lot of people don't realize that that's legal to just walk around carrying a gun. And you can walk around carrying like an AK-47 if you want, if you have a Type 3 assault weapons permit. What I didn't know, since I started researching all these guns, like I've been researching them constantly for the last couple of weeks, a lot of your assault rifles that you'll see in games like Call of Duty or whatever, they make semi-automatic versions of those now. That's why I've been seeing all these gun stores like the F3000, the Vector, Uzis, AK-47s, ACRs, um, all kinds of AR-15s, uh, SCARs. They make those all where they just shoot once every time you pull the trigger. And they're about 2500 to $2,000 each. Uh, I don't know what the fully automatic ones are worth, but probably about a 1000 more, maybe something like that. But if you wanted to buy those and carry them around, there's no problem with it. They also make this neat little gun. I'll show you a picture of that when I get back on the fraps, but uh, it's like an imitation version of a SCAR that shoots 22 caliber. It's like a little 22 rifle, but it looks like a SCAR assault rifle. And it's made by this company, ISSC Austria. And those are about 500 bucks, which is pretty awesome. And another thing you probably don't know is they have these competitions, these tournament kind of things that were... It's called a uh, three gun, and you use a pistol, and you use a shotgun, and you use some kind of a rifle, like an assault rifle or a sniper rifle. And it's all based on speed. I mean, accuracy kind of takes a part in it, I think, but I think mostly you just have to hit your targets and hit them all as fast as you can. And it's all about figuring out where you're going to go, how many shots you're going to take, when you're going to reload, when you're not going to reload, and if you use all your bullets without wasting any ammo and stuff, and really cutting your time down. It's really specific and there's a lot of tricks you can do to like reload faster like they have these shotgun reloaders it's like this big stick you just jam in it just jams like six or eight rounds into your shotgun all at once and then there's people that do like little tricks where they'll stick things in their fingers like this or something and they'll carry like a bunch of shotgun shells and they'll just quick reload them all in at once and there's a lot of little tricks like that people do to actually i'll put a link in the description there's a whole website you can watch videos of three guns it's pretty crazy there's this one guy on there who does this crazy little run, like every time he starts out, and it's just funny to watch because he just does his weird run. And apparently he's really good. Um, but it's a really expensive hobby to get into. I was looking at this website. Near my town, there's this thing called the Bluegrass Sportsman's League, right? They have divisions for all these different competitions. Air guns, archery, bass fishing, 
casting your fishing pole in a certain spot, uh, muzzle loaders, pistols, pointer setters, which is like when you take a dog out and it hunts birds, rifle, skeet, and trap shooting. And then over here there's like cowboy action pistol, there's a three gun, there is some kind of bullseye competition, a steel showdown, which is like you shoot steel targets. There's all these different things you can do, and I don't have any guns or bows or any kind of things to do that with, but I kind of want to join this club and, like, see how fun it could be. But I don't know where I could, like, practice shooting a bow and arrow, unless I snuck out at night, maybe, and found a big empty field somewhere. Unless I drive, like, three hours to my mom and dad's farm, which is going to be, like, a pain in the ass, so... I want to do this, but I don't know how to exactly go about it. But anyway, I was talking about uh, the open carry thing. You can carry around your gun in the open if you want in most states like mine but there's a lot of states where it's kind of it's legal but it's really up in debate in debate like the cops don't know it's legal so when you're carrying your gun around people will call the cops and the cops will come and check it out and there's nothing really they can do because you're not doing anything wrong so these people on the uh, internet are making all these videos and it's hilarious because they're fucking with cops and they're just like the cops will come up to them and they'll ask them to see their gun and they'll either say no and they'll ask to see their ID and they say no I don't want to show you my ID I don't have to and I'm not doing anything wrong so you can't do anything about it and it just pisses the cops off and they can't do shit about it and it's so funny sometimes they'll actually break the law and they'll make you or they'll try to arrest you and shit or they'll call somebody and they'll find out they're actually wrong but it's just so much fun to watch because this one guy had an AK-47 out and they couldn't do anything about it and a lot of them like have this law where you can't have your gun loaded so people walk around with like unloaded guns and they all meet up at like a restaurant and the restaurant people kick them out and just trying to raise awareness of the issue you know it's funny because the cops will stop people just walking down the street and they'll ask to see their driver's license when they're not driving a car and then the people will say i don't have to show you my id and then they'll say can i be on my way and the cop will say no you can't be on your way i'm questioning you and then they'll say am i being detained and they'll say no you're not being detained and then they say like oh if i'm not being detained then i am free to go and they'll be like wait what <laughs> like they can't understand like either you're detaining somebody or you're letting them go you can't do both or not do both at the same time and um there's just one where this guy was going into a restaurant like a burger king or something with his daughter and some woman just is paranoid about it and she calls 911 and tells them that she saw a guy like get out of his car and put a gun in a holster and take his daughter into a restaurant or take a little girl into a restaurant and then 911 calls the restaurant and was like is anything going on to her and like no nothing's going on <laughs> and the cops go out and check it out. Guy has all his permits. Nothing's wrong. And it's just people freaking out for no reason because people are exercising their Second Amendment rights to carry guns around. And it's just hilarious. I love it. A lot of times people will just come up to you and they'll they'll do like a, a 12031E check or whatever in California. Or I think Oregon might be one of those. And Michigan and New Hampshire. These are all like some really contested states. And like you can carry around an empty gun. You can keep your ammo on the other side of your belt. So the cop will like take your gun out for you. Because if you start to pull your gun out and another cop comes up and sees you pulling the gun on a cop. Then they're going to shoot you. So you have to let them take your gun out and like do all the little buttons and stuff and then you have to show them how to take the slide back and it's just funny because there's no reason for it like you have to assume that nobody's committed a crime unless you have probable cause and nobody has any probable cause it's just some people panicking in the streets and calling the cops but uh, i would like to see them do it with like a ski mask on or not even like have the slide on the gun like take just a frame and stick it in there and make people freak out and like the cops show up and you're like it's not even a whole gun it's just like a, a handle <laughs> or like um Put the gun on a dog when you're walking your dog and, like, have it be, like, your pack animal. Because back in the old days, people used to, like, have their guns on their horses. So that might work. Just different ways to fuck around with cops. I think it's funny. So anyway, I'm going to go to Fraps now and I'll show you some stuff. All right, this is your uh, FN SCAR basic uh, assault rifle that everybody's familiar with from games. And this is the MK-22 from ISSC Austria. Looks really uh, similar, doesn't it? you got these three different charging handle locations you can put the lever in which is kind of like these three in the front here and you can make it ambidextrous you can put it on either side it has the same adjustable cheek crest in the back it's got the flip up sights uh... it's really cheap plastic though on the bottom i think the scar is more of a better grade composite material but it looks really similar and it's like five hundred bucks versus twenty five hundred bucks because it shoots shitty little twenty two long rifle shells let's see i want that twenty two and if I wanted to join all these competitions, I would need some kind of a compound bow and a shotgun. So already this is an expensive hobby to get into. But I've limited my guns, as far as handguns, down to 6 hour 226, which is what this is. This is the uh, dual tone, reverse tone. Pretty standard. You could probably get one of these about 730 bucks right here. Which is really high compared to like 
a Ruger SRC or SR9, whatever it's called, 9mm, which is about 380. Or there's a ton of like Smith and Wesson XDs around here you can get that are like three, four hundred bucks, pretty cheap. Um, the thing about the Sig 226 that I like is the grip and the trigger is really smooth. It's got a built-in under barrel rail if you want to put a laser or something on it. Most of them have this uh, perpendicular rear sight, which is good. Like if your your sh your left hand is shot or it's fucked up or something, and you can't charge the slide back. You can just jam it on your shirt or something to get it caught in your clothes. It has a decocker on the side. It's got some really nice grips. You can also take the 9mm or whatever, well I'm pretty much set on 9mm because it's cheaper to shoot. Uh, the 40 and the 45 and everything above 9mm is crazy expensive. Uh, but you can take the slide off and the the uh, magazine out and you, you get these converter kits that make it into a 22. So you can shoot 22s to target practice with. You just put a different slide on it and a different little magazine inside. But those are about 250 to 300 bucks each. And you can get a Sig Mosquito 22 for about 380 or 400 bucks. So if you want to get one of those, you can get them in all kinds of crazy colors too, like digital camo. There's one like in digital uh, tan. It's a little 22 for about 400 bucks. So you might as well get one of those instead of getting a converter kit. Unless you just wanted to be using your same gun all the time and get used to the gun you're actually going to use. Uh, if you wanted to go higher, which I kind of do, you could get the TAC Ops version of the 226, which is this right here. It has this extra stuff on the grip here that like helps you speed load faster and it takes like an extra... Well, it comes with three extra 20 round magazines. It has some built in night sights. You get it in a lot of different kinds of sights. Like Some are just like luminescent or they're, they're painted with uh, bright colors or whatever. And you got some that kind of absorb sunlight during the day and they put it out at night or something like Trigicon or whatever sights. I don't really care really much that much about sights, but uh, this has all the bells and whistles pretty much. It's got a short reset trigger for when you have double action to single action, it resets it better or something. Not really too sure about all that. But you also have this combat version, which is both of these are around thousand eleven hundred bucks. You could probably get the combat for like nine hundred something if you really shop around. Uh, some of them you can get threaded barrel without the threaded barrel to put a silencer or a compensator on it and that's like an extra 80 bucks so pretty expensive if you want to get into the high-end Sig Sauer's which I kinda do kinda like hooked on them but the one I really can't find anywhere is this Beretta 92FS reverse tone 9mm made in Italy uh, I've heard that they only put these out like once a year so I guess like in January or February everybody buys them up and they're all gone by then like now I've seen a lot of websites around. Here's the thing about gun websites. A lot of them are just people that live out in the country and they don't know anything about web design or how it works. I found a guy yesterday that had a website that had one of these on it. And you can just, it's like one of those basic shopping websites. You click add to cart, put in your information, your credit card, and have your shipping address. And guns, you can't just ship them to somebody's house. You have to ship them to an FFL licensed dealer, which is going to cost you an extra 30 bucks for them to actually transfer it and then there's taxes and all that. So whenever you buy a gun it's going to cost you about an extra hundred bucks just from all the transfer fees and registration crap and taxes. But this guy had it set up where you could just have it sent to your house and I don't know if he could actually do that or not because I knew it sounded fishy so I called the guy and he says uh, yeah I don't actually have those I've been trying to get that taken off the website for a while and <laughs> I don't know if he knew that you can't just ship it to somebody's house that you have to send it to a dealer. But he didn't even have the gun. It's not even in existence. And I've seen another one on a website, and I called, and I said, hey, I'm trying to check on this gun. I don't know if it's new or used, you know, but they said, oh, we don't even have that. It's just been on that website. <laughs> and, like, nobody knows what's on their websites. So I could probably make a pretty good living organizing gun stores as websites for them and actually keeping up with what they actually have and what they don't. Might be a good way to make a living. I don't know, but I can't find one of these to save my life. A lot of people buy these up, limited edition kind of things, and they just put them in a safe and they never shoot them, which is why I want to... I actually have one to shoot. I just think it'd be funny. And then there's also this, which is a Taurus version of the 92FS, which is a little different because the safety's lower. It's not on the slide. It's on the actual frame. But it looks pimp as hell. It's got rosewood grips. It's got gold accents. It's about 550 bucks compared to, like, I probably have to pay at least 615 to 700 on the uh, two-tone if I could find one. It's 550 bucks, which is high for a Taurus, but... It is a Taurus. It's not an actual Beretta. 
and I don't know if all the stuff is actually as smooth as a Beretta is or not because this is supposedly Taurus bought a Beretta factory in Brazil and they make the same shit with the same people and this, they used to make the Berettas it's the same people and it's the same machines and everything that they used to make Berettas with but it's Taurus it's kind of an off shitty brand a lot of people like Taurus though there's not really anything wrong with them so this will probably be a good idea to get one of these I don't know but it's like if I buy this then that's 550 bucks gone that I can't spend on an actual Beretta later on I don't want to get to where I'm spending like two grand on guns just because I have this kick right now to buy guns. So this is what I'm deliberating over. All these different nuances, you know, of things that good and the bad and it's like positives and negatives. But I might actually end up settling for one of these, an FMP45, which is a good gun. FN makes the SCAR, they make the F3000, they make the uh, FN Foul Paratrooper, which I saw one of those in some automatic the other day. The only thing I don't like about this gun is the bottom the frame everything is all composite materials it's all plastic like a Glock it doesn't have like a metal frame and I've seen a clip of Hickok 45 shooting it and it didn't seem very accurate with it so I'm kind of turned off to this a little bit even though it is an FN it looks pimp as hell I don't think they come with a red dot sight they might I think I saw one of these it might have been about 500 600 bucks like pretty cheap it's got a built-in rail it's got the front little grips if you want to like hold it two-handed weird you know and it's got this adjustable back strap so you can make the grip thicker if you want it's got a lot of stuff on it I mean it's a pretty pimp gun but that's what I'm kind of limited down to these are my options so let's see what you guys think about it so last Wednesday about a week ago I want to use this scribble application now and show you what I did uh, I live here in Lexington Kentucky I'm just gonna mark the center because I don't really know where I don't you know where I live All right so there's a uh, there's about six good gun stores in town. There's one right here, here, and here. And then there's one here, here, and there's like a sporting goods store over here. So that one has like a lot of good airsoft shit in it. So there's about six stores here, right, that I checked out. And there's a store here in Cynthiana that I checked out the other day after this big trip that I went on. But I went on this trip, I went south, and there's a store right here that has like a little range, and there's a range right here. So there's two indoor ranges near me that I can fuck around with. And when I got to this store, there was a guy in there talking about when he was in the military, how he used to call in airstrikes and like laser designation and stuff like that. And he was talking to somebody about weird kind of how it worked in the military. Then I went on south through here. I don't think there was a gun store in Nicholasville. There might have been. And I got down here to this place called Canoe Creek Ranch, which is like kind of like a vacation spot you can take people to and like spend the night. And they got like indoor 3D archery ranges and they got like um, trap shooting for shotguns. And I saw like a wild turkey running around there. It's pretty neat, but I didn't really go in. I just kind of checked it out. Then I went west to this little store here in Harrodsburg, right? Kind of, it's a pretty nice little shop. Had a nice little revolver I thought about maybe getting. And then I went north to Frankfort, Kentucky, and there was a gun store right here. This guy had a pretty nice, uh, maybe a, what was it? It might have been an FN or something, FNX maybe. It was pretty cheap. And he had a big dog. Like, I've been to three or four different stores that had big dogs in there. And then I went to a little store right here, just outside of Frankfort on the way out, that uh, had a lot of new guns. They had a lot of cool shit. They had that uh, Mark 22 fake scar rifle that I was freaking out because I saw that I was like is that 500 bucks what the fuck is that that's a rifle 500 bucks and I got home and I looked it up and figured out what it was but while I was there this German woman and her daughter came in they were visiting from Germany I don't know if it's because Frankfurt is named after the German city of Frankfurt because there's a bunch of places like we have this place called Hamburg and we have Harrodsburg and these are all like German names so know, there's a lot of German shit around here Anyway, they were saying, like, oh, this is a real gun store. We've never seen one of these real gun stores before. And they were kind of freaking out, saying how all this stuff in Germany, you have to, like, fill all these papers if you want to own a gun and stuff. And the girl was pretty hot, and I kind of got distracted looking at her, and I didn't really check out a lot of guns. And um, so then I went west. Like, here's the actual Google map that has all the gun stores on it. Okay, I don't know. This one was somebody's house. It wasn't a real store. And I went to this place right here. Okay, so I got to this one. This one was a couple of women running the store, and they kind of ran their store like a business where you tell them what you want, and they look it up in the catalog, and they figure out what their discount would be if they bulk order it, and they don't really know a lot about guns. They don't seem to know. They just kind of they run it based on like discounts and stuff like that. They don't really care about the actual... Oh, what am I doing here? I'm drawing stuff. 
So then I went on, and I ended up in Louisville, Kentucky here, and I found a really good store. I think I might have checked out a store here, and I checked out a store here. And this one was really good. I know they had an FN something there. It was really nice. And then maybe there was another store, like right around here. And then I went this way, and I went around Fort Knox. This whole gray area right here is Fort Knox, this area. And then right up here is the town of West Point. Uh, where they have West Point Academy. Um, yeah, so I got the Knob Creek Gun Range. And this place was pretty fucking pimp. They had a huge outdoor range. People were just shooting guns off left and right. It sounded like they had some 50 calibers in there exploding shit. It was built into like the side of a mountain where it all kind of curved inwards like a giant vagina. Like it was a really great backstop for shooting guns. And you could like, you sh everybody would shoot for a while and then they would pause everybody and they would call a ceasefire and then everybody would go out and like change their targets and stuff and then it all come back. And this store had a really nice six hour tack ops two two six that was like ten eighty nine and they had one of those Taurus ninety twos that was uh the golden wood for like five fifty. And they had a big uh what would you call it? A parrot or a one of those big birds, I guess, that talks. Not a parakeet. I don't think it was a parrot though, it was some kind of big bird. It was just like out of its cage eating sunflower seeds and it was just chilling on the counter next to me and I was like, hey bird, it's a pretty nice little store. I really want to go back there again. So then I went on around and I kind of got caught up here at Fort Knox. I got turned around and tried to go through a checkpoint, like a military checkpoint. And these two dudes were like saluting a funeral that went through or something and it was all weird and then like... You thought there were... I thought there would be like some good gun stores near Fort Knox in West Point, but really just Knob Creek gun ranges I had. Now there's like a dotted through here on the road to E-Town. There's like four different like pawn shops and shit I checked out. Not a whole lot. So I went through there and then I think I came home because by that time it was like six o'clock and that's when all the gun stores close. So when I got to like Fort Knox here I was like five o'clock or something and I was like bursting through this road like in the next hour going to four different shops trying to get them all done in time. So that's this huge trip I went on Wednesday. It took me like nine hours all day. And then I checked this place the next day. So now, I know there's a store here. There's a couple stores here I didn't check. So I have to do one of these and then maybe circle around here and come back around like this. Because really this is the part of Kentucky you want to check. I need to check some more places in Louisville too because there's a lot of good stores there. I'm going to have to do one of these and then one of these and then around like this. Like an ampersand. Because once you go, like, eastern Kentucky, like, here you got, like, the Daniel Boone National Forest. And once you go past this line, you get into, like, Redneck, Hicksville. Anything can happen out here. This is the wild east. You don't want to go fucking around <laughs> this part of Kentucky. But you got, like, Hazard, like the Dukes of Hazard. And you got Corbin and London and Harlan. The kind of places you'd see on that TV show Justified, if you watch that shit, where all the, like... RPGs and explosives are going off and meth and marijuana deals and kind of crazy shit happens over in there. You don't want to fuck around with eastern Kentucky. You want to kind of stay west of the, the forest. You want to keep it safe. So that's pretty much my story of uh, how I've been on a quest to find the perfect gun and haven't really found one yet. Is there anything else I need to talk about? Oh, I've also been planning on uh, getting a pet. And I've kind of limited it down to like a guinea pig or maybe a ferret, but a ferret's kind of, I don't know. I'll have to leave it out of its cage a lot. They got hamsters and things, I think they're active at night, and I'm kind of a night person, so I might, maybe I should get a hamster or gerbil or something. But a guinea pig seems like it's more sociable, and it's bigger. Like a hamster is like, it's like that big. I don't want something that's that big. It just doesn't seem very fun. Something's about this big that you can hold in your hands it seems more fun to me. I don't know. But a uh, rabbit It'd be all right, but it's, rabbits are just stupid. They don't do anything. They don't like seem to communicate at all, or seem to be interested in anything. Uh, mice and rats, I guess I haven't really checked into. But chinchillas are nice, but they're like 140 bucks. Like I don't know if they expect you to sell their fur, and that's why they're so much more expensive. You think if you're paying extra 100 bucks for a pet, you get something out of it. Maybe when it dies, sell its fur off. But I don't know. Anyway, let me get uh, let you guys. Tell me what you think about what gun I should get and what pet I should get. And uh, that's pretty much all i got to say for now.